dear colleagues, friends and distinguished guests. It is a great pleasure for me to welcome all of you and I am most grateful for the opportunity to speak here and exchange opinions and perspectives with you, especially in these times of pandemic crisis. The time ahead certainly holds a wealth of complex challenges, yet exchange and discussion continue unabated. Indeed, we can still take the time to enjoy being together, listening to each other and engaging in reflection together. So what will the world be like after the crisis? How can we build a better world in hindsight? What lessons can we learn from the crisis? And what will be the role of gender equality in this global endeavor? Finally, yet crucially, what measures will be appropriate to ensure the steady advancement of gender equality? Jointly pondering our response to the pandemic crisis and the goal of achieving gender equality, both tasks are challenging, but they also present us with opportunities. To start with, let's remember what it is that we are improving when discussing the matters at hand. We are talking about science and the humanities, research and technology, areas of human endeavor that not only have the potential to enable countless simplifications and improvements in our lives, but also to be key to our survival in this changing world. Where would we be today without the advances in biomedical research? And to take this idea a step further, as mentioned above, where would we be now without the curiosity of those scientists who started doing research into coronaviruses and the mRNA vaccination process all those years ago. Incidentally, the latter has its origins actually in cancer research and is yet another example of how later application contexts of a research project are not necessarily foreseeable at the time of funding. To generalize, funding research arising from independent curiosity lays the foundations for rapid yet reliable results, not only in the field of vaccine development, but also in relation to other research needs of the future. The current situation clearly demonstrates that the best way to prepare for new and unforeseeable societal challenges be they biomedical or other, is to generate a knowledge repository that is not yet related to concrete problems, but rather to open questions. Funding the intrinsic motivation and curiosity of researchers proves to be the earliest possible crisis prevention and the best way to build research infrastructures that contribute to resilient societies. Each year, the DFG funds more than 30,000 basic research projects in all areas of the sciences and humanities. Every single one of these has the potential to become highly significant for society overnight. At the same time, research challenges have gender and diversity sensitive aspects. And what is true of such future challenges in general, that we do not know yet what precise form they will take, is likewise true for gender equality dimensions. Some of these challenges may affect gender equality and diversity aspects in a positive or negative way, while others won't. Conversely, some of the challenges that lie ahead of us might even be driven by diversity aspects, while others won't. And some of them might boost diversity in entirely new ways. This is why it is vital 
for the research involved in analyzing and overcoming these challenges, not to reproduce time-worn patterns, but to reflect the most rigorous standards of diversity. Only then will it contribute actively to a more just world, in which academia is able to inform societies in unexpected ways and help tackle future problems successfully. We can achieve this goal if we broaden our very concept and our understanding of how scientific ideas should be developed. Instead of relying too often and too simply on binary criteria or fixed hierarchies when assessing research quality. Allow me to explain. Accomplishments such as the development of the corona vaccine depend on a complex interplay of many factors. How politics and society, science and research funding work together and to what extent all the available dimensions of diversity and the various combinations of ideas, idea providers and procedures can be activated to create something that is genuinely new. Here again, the pandemic is a prime example of the complexity of research contexts. Initial voices from the field of medicine were quickly expanded to include mathematical modeling. Successive input was added from the fields of economics, jurisprudential assessments were made of fundamental rights and a wide variety of issues emerged in the areas of sociology and psychology that continue to occupy us to this day. Flow research was involved in the investigation of aerosol dispersion at an early stage. So instead of demanding often very far-reaching statements from individual scientists, professional communities or interdisciplinary expert committees should be asked to provide more comprehensive assessments. This is why the DFG set out the interplay of these various dimensions early on when setting up its Interdisciplinary Commission for Research on Pandemics. To sum up, what makes such multidisciplinary panels so highly productive is that they are relatively open towards new and unexpected ideas, which is precisely the organizational mindset we need in order to build innovation systems that are inclusive rather than exclusive. In my view, the best possible research happens when researchers are funded based on their excellence. And no one should be excluded from a career in research based on academically irrelevant factors such as gender, ethnic origin, age or health. Even though the advantages of equal participation in the research system are widely known, a considerable proportion of the academic talent pool and therefore the innovation potential available still remains unused. Excellent research requires diversity and originality to ensure long-term engagement with all socially relevant areas and groups. It is crucial that these are adequately represented in academia. The question is how we can tackle this problem effectively. Now, one key aspect is to reach out to those who recruit staff at the research performing institutions. On university appointment committees, for example, there is sometimes a lack of awareness of equal opportunities. In some cases, stereotypes, unconscious bias and hidden agreements persist. To some extent, this may be true of the review process in such areas as research funding as well. One way the DFG addresses these problems is by publishing its Code of Conduct entitled Guidelines for Safeguarding Good Scientific Practice 
which also contains procedures and measures to promote equal opportunity and prevent the abuse of power. Such questions of organizational governance gain in urgency given the severe circumstances of research due to the pandemic. What we see is that the effects of a lockdown, for example, the lack of childcare facilities, impact researchers differently. While applications for funding have generally increased throughout all gender, the same is not true for female early career researchers. In response to this, the DFG has implemented a range of measures to enable short-term relief on gender equality issues. In the long term, we must endeavor to ensure greater diversity at all levels of research. The very concept of scientific excellence will have to include the full range of diversity aspects. It will be crucial to emphasize quality over quantity as well as activities outside academia, service in academic self-administration and involvement in teaching. All this leads to the requirement to broaden our perspective generally and allow for greater diversity in the academic world. For this reason, the DFG is currently developing a diversity strategy which defines standards for diversity policies. In a globalized world, these frameworks need to be international as well. This is why the DFG is supporting the work of the Global Research Council and other international bodies in sharing and applying these standards, particularly within the framework of the United Nations Research Roadmap for the COVID-19 recovery. We can only hope to make progress if we find solutions that suit everyone, everywhere, in the future too. So may this conference contribute to more broadened research assessments and more diverse research landscapes all over the world. Thank you very much.